Hi, I'm Ludwig Dever, Deputy Commissioner in General for Sweden at Expo 2020 Dubai. Now we are here outside the Swedish pavilion The Forest, a pavilion completely made out of wood. Let's uh, take a stroll. So, uh, completely made of wood? Yeah. Um, where do you get those trees from? The trees are there are three, 300 tree trunks uh, from the regions of Dalarna and Västmanland in Sweden. 50 of them are, uh, are supporting the tree houses, as you can see, and the others are here just to create the illusion of the, uh, of the forest. Uh, so who's the architect? Who designed this? So we have three architects, uh, Alessandro Ricolino, uh, Adrian Gardar and Luigi Pardo. All right. It's a very special pavilion, no? I hope it stands out. That's what we're aim aiming for. What are the stories we see here on the, the so people? This is a temporary exhibition that we have made uh, that's called Accessibility. Since this is the Tolerance and Inclusivity Week here at Expo, uh, we have wanted to show how we in Sweden are working with tolerance and inclusivity matters. So people of determination, for instance, how they can uh, uh, actually flourish and, 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 and make something out of themselves uh, regardless of uh, the, uh, the different challenges you have in life. It's very important to include everyone and uh, that's uh, part of Sweden that we would like to... There's always to more that can be done, right? There's always more that and can be done. And a lot more that should be done, right? In, it's fair to say everywhere, kind of. Yeah, definitely. definitely. But is Sweden we one of the best places to take care of uh, everybody? Well, we, we, we have a, a model that we, uh, that we are very proud of and that we would like to show here at Expo 2020. I think that uh, we have, as everyone, uh, always more to learn and that's why it's so important to come together here at Expo and, and other venues to... Uh, so to everybody always talks about the Swedish model. What, is, uh, what model are you talking about here? So the Swedish model is... Uh, actually different models. Uh, we can talk about the Swedish workplace model, how uh, people come together uh, from the employers, the employees, uh, to discuss the, uh, the labor terms. It's one of the Swedish models. All right. Uh, so welcome to the Swedish forest. And we're entering the forest here at the World Expo. And on the right, I see I see uh, the world and it says circular is natural. What would you say about that? So this is the first uh, cluster of the, uh, the Swedish pavilion, the biocircular economy. So this, uh, in this sector, this cluster, we are showing how Swedish companies and their solutions, how they are contributing to a more biocircular economy. And here you could actually, you could steer the, uh, with the help of Steve, our guide, you, you uh, yeah, you could see her. You could. All right. Even more, even more, even faster, and then you could. The trees come to life. Um, you talk about sustainable packaging solutions here. Yeah. Uh, what what do you do with that? So, so here we have different forms of uh, of wood and uh, how wood can be used. Uh, so if we start over here, we could have the, the tree fibers that could be used to actually to, to create clothing. We, uh, we have this, that it's the uh, cross-laminated wood. Also a sustainable, uh, sustainable uh, way of uh, producing uh, buildings that we have used here. So here you see all the tree trunks that we have brought from, from Sweden. To build in wood is, of course, a very sustainable, sustainable uh, construction practice and, that we'd like to and the showcase. And we have been building in wood for millennia. Well, we've been building in wood for for many years. That's that's true. Uh, what is unique with this building is that we have also built the foundation of this pavilion in wood as well, which is quite unique, not not the least in this region. So actually, this stuff under here. Yes. So, there's, a, uh, there's a desert down here, right? Well, so below us right now, below these stones are actually even more wood. Wood that is uh, placed on sand with a thin layer of foam glass. Uh, so it's actually 50% almost of the wood that, uh, that we're using below us and 50% that you actually see. 
All right. Uh, so people walk here, um, and what there's like a metallic reflective structure on the side to give an impression that it's double the size, no? Um, and you have many topics going on here. Um, what other topics are you talking about? Yeah, so we have, uh, we have all in all five clusters in the Swedish pavilion. So we started with the biocircular economy. We have the next generation's travel and transport. We uh, have um, connected industry, new materials. We have life science around the corner. And then we finish everything off with uh, smart societies. What's going on here with the smarter industry? So here you could you could see some showcases of the Swedish companies. In this case, AstraZeneca, uh, how they are working uh, in a smarter way to produce the industry of tomorrow. But so AstraZeneca solutions. is not a Swedish, right? It's a Swedish uh, British company. So, ah, uh, oh yeah, Swedish, so the Astra, Astra part of AstraZeneca is uh, is from Sweden. All right, um, and. We can walk over to the smart, uh, smart city. So here's uh, another example of how uh, how Swedish companies are actually creating the uh, this smart city of uh, of the future. Um, th do they light up in certain ways in this yes, demonstration? Yes, we could actually have one of our guides, Orsi, so who could uh, show exactly how this is. Uh, this works. Could you please show uh, show us how how this feature is working? Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, we don't have your sound. Maybe uh, you can explain. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. If you can click it right there. Okay. Yeah. So this is an imaginary city with solutions from Sweden by companies that presenting their uh, products and solutions for sustainable cities when it comes to environment, uh, social aspects and economical aspects as well. So it's to do with the electric cars, for example, uh, yes, designing uh, the city in a different way? Okay, solutions we have is electric ferry, for example, in Stockholm that drives between the old town and the small islands. It can supercharge in 10 minutes and it drives with 98 passengers for another 50 minutes. All the buses in Sweden run on biofuel, which means it's plant-based. All the trains in Sweden are electric as well. Then uh, we have garbage solution, which is under earth. And it means that the, there is a garbage collection center in a corner of a residential neighborhood and with 60, 60 70 kilometers per hour the garbage bags are sucked to a collection point and then it gets collected from there it is very environmentally friendly because it uses of course the trucks need less petrol uh, 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 less um, fuel and uh, of course they uh, don't cross so many intersections either so it's more environmentally friendly then we have uh, connected ambulances with 5g to the hospitals so some of the um, tests can be already done in the ambulance cars so the patients get quicker help when they arrive to the hospital uh, do they light up in a certain way when people click or? Yes, of course. When, so maybe when, you can try to click? Yeah, yeah. whenever I click on, uh, on a different option, let's say planes, then it uh, light up with airplanes. We have digital solutions for airports as well, meaning that an airport doesn't have to be at the same spot where the tower is. And it's actually working like that too. And then if, let's say, I click on the buses and I click on one of those, then again, it lights up in a different way, connecting all the buses in the city, meaning that you do not necessarily have to have car when you live in a city because uh, everything is available either by public transport or walking distance. Who, who designed this? Um, it, it was actually designed by several companies together because they present the solutions in the different topics and it was an artist lady who 
who came up with the glass uh, structures. And then of course some of them you can interpret as 5G or information flow, even you can think about a hyperloop. Then some of these crystal elements can be interpreted as rivers or green areas because within a, within a city you also need to have a um, place for, for people where they can uh, do recreation. And it, the Swedish law is you have to live within 400 meters to your doorstep to a green area, either a park or to forest. All right, thanks a lot. Thank thanks you. A lot. Well, you could, you could easily think so, but it's actually the, the amount of biofuel that we uh, were using uh, earlier on. And you can see now how much more it is today. We could see here our coal use uh, from the, how it changed from 1970 to today. So it's been actually going down quite drastically. You could also see the hydro and wind over here and nuclear that's had its peak a couple of cent uh, decades ago, but it's actually been going down. Oh. Yeah, and some that's of the cent centrals are being closed down now and stuff, the nuclear plants. Well, we have closed down uh, a few of them, but we are so are dependent on them still. The one, the one near Copenhagen, I'm joking. Mm -hmm. I am. Yeah, that one. Uh, what's with the stage? No, so this is our co-creation stage. So uh, this is used for, uh, yeah, uh, variety of different activities uh, on our inauguration we had several speeches some artists that uh, performed here uh, we also for the cinnamon bun day we made the longest line of cinnamon buns cinnamon buns uh, in in a row uh, actually achieving a guinness world record uh, we also had a few seminars we had a few um, showcases of swedish uh, sustainable products as well and and now we are showing some uh, some films about Sweden pioneer the possible together high-tech innovations but also landscapes of Sweden to get a better idea of uh, Sweden as a country what's the position of uh, Sweden in terms of uh, world leadership in clean technology uh, you're doing a lot of wind and stuff, right? And uh, you're doing a lot of renewables. Yes. Are you the, one of the leaders? No, so it's, uh, it, it's very, very important for us to, uh, to, thanks to technology and with the help of technology, try to find new solutions regardless of the field that they are in. And I think that's uh, something that we are very proud of in, in Sweden to have many of those companies with us here that are actually industry leaders. So they have a chance to actually showcase what they are doing, uh, showing their solutions here at the Expo in the Swedish pavilion. So we're seeing a, a little bit of that in the background right now. Uh, is this an interactive bubble table? Yes, so this is a co-creation table. So the more people that are joining this table with their hands, now it's only me, it's just a little bit of music and it's a little bit of movement, so a little bit of lights. But the more people joining, the louder the music gets, the more lights uh, we will have to it's a showcase of how to do things together. Our motto for this participation here is co-creation for innovation. We believe that it's the co-creative uh, uh, efforts that lead to the best results. We have the government, companies, academia, and NGOs. We need all, everyone together and we need to cooperate also among countries. So, uh, that's why it's all so important that we are present at this global arena that is Expo 2020. Uh, here I see something to do with the uh, uh, digital science. health. Yes, and we, we could also have a Bella to just uh, click on a few buttons here to, uh, to see what we could uh, what, what you could learn here at the uh, at the co -create, So you're talking about uh, uh, utilized organs? Basically, we have two versions of this map. The first uh, version of it is about the top 10 reasons that people are dying from, essentially diseases or events. We have in Africa, 
we have HIV causing at least 22, 28% of death in, uh, for the people in the middle ages, in the 30s and the 49s. And the map allows you to scale the cursor in the future to see what the future data looks like 40 years in the future. You have the expectation says that the road accidents will be causing at least 13.6% of death on the African region throughout. And this applies to the rest of the world as well. In the European region in 2016, for the people in the Middle Ages, uh, ischemic or chronic heart diseases causes at least 11% of deaths. And that's too many, uh, too many uh, meatballs. No. Oh yeah, yeah. probably. <laughs> And also the same thing applies, so if you scale the cursor up, you find that mental health depreciation causes people to self-harm at the rate of 12.4%. But this can be, all these things can be prevented, like um, Definitely. let's That's the prevent point of the self-harm problems, let's prevent the, the, the heart disease and the, and the tuberculosis and the exactly. HIV. The point of this future data is to be able to work on an innovative medical solutions now, so you'd be able to predict the kind of uh, or the most optimal solution for that. The other version of this map is ranking of the countries uh, all worldwide based on uh, essentially the quality of their organ uh, tr donation systems. So on the right, you have the total transplanted organs in that particular country. On the left, you have the success rate of the planting organs per million of people. So worldwide at the moment we have Spain and followed by the US and France. Uh, similarly, you can choose regional wise in Europe and Middle East and elsewhere as well. Some parts of the world don't have data in the topic, so it's understandable. However, in the Middle East we have Kuwait and as well as other regions as well. What's the, the main cause of this in the Middle East? the moment let's go back to the middle east and the previous map so we have the moment people in the middle ages are mostly dying from ischemic heart disease at the rate of 15.6 percent and then it's kind of like war and stuff that shouldn't be yes. happening and that's, the road injury should be covered by self-driving cars yes they say that that might be uh, one of the solutions to road accidents however that doesn't prevent people from obtaining more cars and more congestions in cities so that's likely going to increase uh, road accidents and increase uh, the likelihood of having uh, road injury. So that's how do you predict all those things? Uh, is well, a bunch of algorithms and we stuff? We are using data from World Health Organization to do that. All right. All right. Thank you, Thanks a lot. Thank you. So this was uh, the the live science cluster. We will uh, continue on to the uh, smart society cluster. Could also have a look over here. And Assad here could, uh, could help us with, uh, with how this installation works. Uh, can you guide us through it? Um, hello, uh, everyone. So you're here at the smart society table um, and from here uh, you, you have the opportunity to have a quick recap as to what you covered throughout your visit here at the pavilion. Um, but it's also your opportunity to give us feedback as to what you found most interesting. Yeah. Um, so uh, these were the different parts of the pavilion, smart city, life science, next generation, tra transport and travel, circular bioeconomy, as well as connected industry. And what happens when you click on one of these? So when you click on one of them, you can then go ahead and uh, look at the different categories uh, and the innovation technologies, they're gonna be coming up over here. So for instance, this uh, is uh, one of the technologies that a lot of people find very interesting. It's the electric and autonomous buses, um, especially by the Volvo Group. Uh, Wait, have, do you have yes. them uh, deployed in Sweden? Uh, uh, only for trials, so right. only for trials so far. Okay. Yeah, so right, and the last part is to drag the blueprint. Yeah, so we just push the blueprint into the, into the earth 
but then that then contributes to the statistics that uh, form part of the smart society. And as you can see over there, there's a pie chart. Oh, wow. And you can uh, throw another one to the pie chart? Sure, I'll do that. So here are some delivery drones that I'm swiping into the pie chart. Oh, nice. Do you have them deployed, the delivery drones? Uh, not yet. Uh, drones have been uh, more and more used in Sweden as in many other countries uh, by both the authorities and of course uh, for private use as well, uh, but not for delivery so far. But uh, in the future, we hope. Yeah. But, uh, some of these things it would be nice to see them happen soon, right? Uh, s uh, some countries, let's say Sweden, uh, need to uh, jump in and make things happen faster and sooner, right? All these things. Well, it, uh, that's why we're here, to, to showcase a little bit of our thinking and uh, the idea, solutions that Swedish companies bring to the table. And uh, I want to show you one last thing before we, we leave the pavilion, as we are now at the, the final, final stage of the, the pavilion. Uh, you cannot come to this this forest without planting a tree to contributing. So what you could do is you go into the gift shop and you buy, buy a wooden coin. And then with the wooden coin, you could actually, with this installation, choose to plant a tree. Uh, so what you do here is you choose your tree, you press the button, and then a tree will be planted in, in cooperation with our um, our NGO partner, uh, the agroforestry, and then uh, a tree will be uh, will be planted in the wall. So you'll contribute also to, to planting Plant, a plant tree. Planted in Sweden or not? No, it will be uh, mainly, mainly in, uh, in a few African countries uh, that they are working in. All right. And, uh, uh, and last step, of course, uh, we have uh, sustainability in, in everything we do, and uh, that also goes for the, uh, the gift shop. Transparel. So here you can find a, a great variety of Swedish uh, Swedish items. So these and are very what, special. What is designs. special with this uh, with the, these products is that you could actually see the climate impact here, and you could compensate for it. Uh, you can see that the uh, 8.53 kilograms of carbon dioxide uh, it's equal to 4.05 dirhams. So you could easily, when buying this item, you could compensate for it. So it's uh, CO2 neutral when you buy it. You have a, a bar, right? A restaurant. We have a, an IKEA uh, cafe and that's open to the public. Uh, of course, it's serving a meatballs and- uh, Is it open? It's, uh, it's open. Ooh. So we have it here on the front. Uh, you could have uh, the meatballs, of course, both with meat and uh, the plant balls. You could have some Swedish dime cake. You could have cinnamon buns. You could have a few other sweets. You could have some coffee, some drinks. And you also have a terrace up there on yes. top. So we have a serving. Uh, and here's the. Uh, outside and uh, as well as uh, upstairs all right well cool. so thanks a lot and uh, okay. uh, there are a lot of discussions during the expo with the thank you um, I guess there's lots of discussions lots of heads of state or politicians or uh, attendees companies to come and discuss yeah. to get the right contact in the country to start business right no, it's definitely uh, uh, a great meeting venue for, for both business and for governments uh, to come together to discuss the solutions that uh, the, the world is facing and the, uh, the global solutions that we need to reach. So I think uh, Expo 2020 is such a perfect venue to, uh, to do these discussions. All right. And um, I guess there's also, let's say, there's the EU, there's also all the Scandinavian countries together doing... Uh, coming together at the COP26, for example, uh, uh, um, doing, trying to get things going faster just in Scandinavia. 
together? Yeah, definitely, uh, we, our, our Nordic friends, the Scandinavian friends, are among our most like-minded, and uh, we, we do a lot of things together. We have a great cooperation here at Expo as, as well with our, our Nordic friends uh, to, to drive our, our priorities forward together.